when when the person incarnates, obviously you've got the let's say this is the baby. So the baby now has is the half of a soul. In this case, is a male half. You've got a spirit body created and a material body created. Right? That happens soon after conception. So from that moment on, and usually the woman will feel that the that, that there is a soul now connected to this creation inside of her. Many women feel that soul into them, in fact, uh, and, and connect to them. And so what happens now is that from that moment on, this little soul, which, by the way, has its own free will, needs to be respected. And the problem with uh, the abortions or terminations that occur is that most of the time we don't really understand what we're doing. We don't understand that actually we're terminating the life on Earth of, a, of this little soul that's just been incarnated. Now what happens to the souls themselves when they pass is that there's a place in some at the top of the first sphere called Summer Land. I don't know if any of you have heard of that. Yep. Um, it's referred to in much spiritual literature. And in this place, um, there are a large number of celestial spirits who, who take care of unborn children who have been terminated. So what actually happens when you terminate is the material body is disconnected from the spirit body. And from that moment on, now they're living in the spirit world as a, as a, as a little tiny child, if you like, that, that grows uh, naturally just as it would here on Earth. And, and a celestial spirit um, nurses that child to maturity. When I say to maturity, the, the child has a choice of how large it's going to get and how old it's going to look. But that happens in Summerland. So in terms of what happens to the child, what happens to the child is that uh, you know it's obviously looked after and cared for and loved. Now, that being said, there are a number of issues with regard to the termination that we need to face inside of us ourselves. And by the way, the responsibility for termination of pregnancy doesn't just rest with the woman. All right? The responsibility for termination of pregnancies rests with both the man and the woman who created this child. Does that make sense? So from a law of compensation point of view, or a karmic point of view, the person who terminated this, child, this child's the pregnancy will go through law of compensation emotions when you connect with what's actually happened. And really what's actually happened is you've taken away the free will of that child to have a choice to live here by its own choice and you've actually imposed your will on that child. And that is actually one of, and, and to be blunt with you, and I know this is going to sound very harsh for many women who have had terminations, but it, it's very similar to a murder from a point of view of a law of compensation point of view. And, and Jenny, that child has emotions about that. The child has many emotions about that. The, the passing child actually has huge amounts of emotions that the nursing celestial spirit needs to help them get through. The, the huge emotions include emotions of not being wanted. So if you can imagine from the moment that you incarnated, you started feeling these feelings of not being wanted, and then when you were terminated, you know, nobody wanted you basically on earth. And, and so the child itself goes through quite large amounts of emotions, which the celestial spirit in some land nurses them through. Now, quite often what happens, because the mother is quite detuned from the act itself, so any of you who have had a termination will obviously go through two sets of differing types of emotions. Often what happens is many who have the termination go through very severe guilt type of emotions almost immediately. And that's the law of compensation emotions for actually the act that's just been done. Many uh, women, though, sort of detune from it completely and justify it using these intellectual justifications of I couldn't look after the child and so forth. And the problem with that is that uh, you're detuning from the law of compensation emotions, which you will need to experience at some other time. And you will also find from that moment onwards, you will start having a lot of problems with your internal uh, female organs as well, because there's chakra and energy points related to those emotions as well that will start shutting down. So you actually start harming your own body as well, detuning from those emotions. So, so what needs to really happen is for the woman who has terminated, now I'm not talking about miscarriages here, I'm talking about abortions. 
the, per the person who has aborted the child needs to face the fact that they have actually terminated the free will of another individual. Does that make sense? So, so if somebody asks me, am I pro-choice with regard to abortion? I am pro-choice with regard to your free will. What I mean by that is you're allowed to do anything you want. You're even allowed to break all of God's laws if that's what you want. But if you're asking me, am I breaking a law of God if I terminate a, a pregnancy? The answer is yes. And you will feel law of compensation emotions about that at some point in your life, either now or after you've passed. The key is not so much to go into judgment about what you've done. The key is to look very carefully at the causal emotions that created the event. Do you understand the difference between that? You see, what often we do is we, we go into judgment about what we... When we hear the truth, for instance, the, the truth that I'm saying to you about this situation is you have harmed the free will of another person when you terminate a pregnancy. Right? So that's the truth. Now, when we go into that truth, we then have a tendency to make the next step, which is to then judge ourselves for making that thing, and we go into this guilt phase. And to be honest with you, guilt doesn't really get you anywhere emotionally. It, uh, it goes, you go a lot often into self-punishment phase, and I'm not advocating that. What I'm advocating is, firstly, you realise what you've done, you prayed it and talked to God about forgiveness, gaining God's forgiveness and mercy about what you've done, but the step as repent, repentance step that's required, and remember we talked about repentance at the last one before Christmas, the repentance step that is required is that you need to actually look at the causal emotion inside of yourself that caused you to terminate that pregnancy. And you will find it was fear about your life being changed, it was fear about, you know, maybe your relationship wasn't working very well, or it was a one night stand and you don't want to be connected to that person. And, you know, there might be lots and lots of other things that have gone on that create that termination. And you need to work through those emotions. And by the way, it's not just the woman that needs to work through these emotions. The man needs to work through the emotions to the same intensity as the woman. You follow me? Because it was a creation of both parties. Now, if the male is, you know, a one-night stand or something and you've never seen him again, then obviously then that makes it difficult for you to, to address that issue. He, and, of course, it's his issue that he needs to face down the track at some point anyway. And he will actually go through law of compensation emotions about that. So if he actually enabled you to have the abortion, wanted you to have the abortion, used his influence to, on you to have your, the abortion, wouldn't support you if you didn't have the abortion, then he has a lot of law of compensation things to deal with in his own life as well about the abortion itself. Does that make sense? So, from God's perspective, when we harm the free will of another, it's, the free will is one of the greatest gifts that God has given you. So when you harm the free will of another person, it's one of the greatest sins, if you could call it that, or disharmonies with love, which remember I'm saying sin is disharmony with love. So it's the most, most great, one of the greatest disharmonies with love that you've done in your life when you've harmed the free will of another person, and particularly if you've harmed it permanently. Right? And when I say permanently, of course nothing is permanent, but in the sense of permanently on earth, this person now can't live their life on earth. And in fact, they can't live their life on earth again until they go right, right up to the soul union state with their soulmate and then return if they wanted to have a life on earth. Now at the moment, there are some children who have, who have been terminated who reached the soul union state in the 22nd sphere with their soulmate and have chosen to reincarnate. <coughs> so since 1987 there has been other reincarnations <coughs> and many of those have been ones who never experienced a life on earth before. Does that make sense? And they wanted to experience it so they've reincarnated. 